If Koreans were asked to pick two of the most beloved Korean writers in history, many would choose Lee Ho Suk and Park Young Lee. With their celebrated short stories and epic saga, they both had a huge contribution to Korean literature. Let's learn more about their lives and legacy in Gangwon-do Province. Pyeongchang is the place where Lee Ho Suk was born in 1907. He then moved to Seoul and Pyongyang to pursue his career as a writer. Yet many of his stories are set in his hometown. The late Lee Ho Suk's literature crystallizes the longing for one's hometown lyricism, human emotions, and love. When the Buckwheat Blossoms is Lee's most famous story and one of the most celebrated Korean short stories to date. Full of poetic symbols, metaphors, and implications, it is praised for its beautiful literary expressions. The story revolves around a poor old trader that meets a young trader in Pungpyeong, who turns out to be his son and reminisces about his past love. Using Pyeongchang's stunning and natural beauty as the backdrop, the story depicts the pure-hearted nature of human beings and inextricable human relationships. Also, it captures the lifestyle and local culture of Pyeongchang in the early 1900s. Set in Pungpyeong and Pyeongchang, when the buck beak blossoms captures the social culture and sentiments of the time, as well as the landscapes of farm villages, making it the perfect reference to study the Korea of the past. The burgeoning flowers of the buckwheat, growing thick in the surrounding fields, look to be a profusion of sprinkled white salt on the terrain. These surroundings under the warm moonlight felt extremely gratifying and suffocating. And the village offers breathtaking scenery of buckwheat flowers every September, just like in the story. The village also has a water mill where the protagonist, Ho Seng Won, falls in love with a beautiful woman one night. Next to the village is Lee Ho Suk Memorial Hall. The hall displays Lee's writing room, the chronicle of his writings, handwritten manuscripts, and keepsakes. I was able to discover the very old books of the late Lee Ho Suk and learn more about him. About an hour drive from Pungpyeong is Wonju, where Park Young Lee Literature Park is located. She wrote Korea's symbolic epic novel, The Land. The Land is exceptionally long by both Korean literature and world literature standards. Park devoted 26 years of her life to finish this grand work, using some 31,200 pages of squared manuscript paper for 200 characters written by fountain pens. From the late Joseon Dynasty, to the liberation of Korea from Japan's colonial rule in 1945, the dramatic saga depicts many significant events in modern history. What makes the land noteworthy is that Park Young Lee highlighted the dignity of humans through every one of the nearly 700 characters featured in the saga. Whether they are talented or incompetent, rich or poor, the late novelist emphasized the fact that everyone is equal and born with dignity. The land is deeply connected with Park's life journey. Born in 1926, while Korea was under Japanese rule, she experienced the Korean War and dictatorship. Her husband went missing during the war and eventually died in prison. And she also lost her three-year-old baby son the same year. Therefore, Park began her career as a professional writer to make a living for her daughter and herself. The city still preserves the old house where the master novelist lived and wrote the novel. The saga is comprised of five parts and Park wrote the fourth and fifth parts here before eventually completing the novel in 1994. This old fountain pen seems to show traces of the turmoil 
and torment she suffered for 26 years. Through the land, I was able to take a glimpse at how our ancestors overcame the painful moments of our history. Although I didn't live through the times, it was moving. Park Young Lee and Lee Hyo Sung offered different portrayals of Korea's turbulent modern history using the power of their pens. Visit Pyeongchang and Wonju in Gangwon-do province to learn more about not only their celebrated literature, but also their personal lives.